I've got a bunch of awesome cars on order and the list is ever changing, as is the dynamic of my collection. So I'm gonna first go through the dynamic of the collection. Before I had pretty much a little bit of everything, now I am shifting it more into three different buckets. The first bucket is gonna be hypercars. Hypercars have kind of ruined me. They're so awesome that it's hard to go and grab a yellow Ferrari when I have all of these hypercars. So I'm realizing that I'm just not driving the supercars as much. Hypercars are definitely my biggest focus right now um, because they're just amazing, you know what I'm saying? And most of the ones on order, I would say, are a hypercar. Second bucket is going going to be the extra special supercars. So a Ferrari 488 GTB is just not special uh, enough. Sorry to all the 488 GTB owners out there. The 765 LT, however, that's a $400,000, $450,000 uh, supercar that is hard to get, especially the Spider model. And it's going for about, I don't know, seven, dollars $800,000 right now, who knows? It'll be $600,000 in probably six months. But that car, that car keeps up with the hypers like oh. nobody's business. It's well, faster than half the hypers, I think. We tuned it, yes. and it's got it's downpipes, and it shoots fire. Yeah. I am in shock. It's shaking the whole earth when it pops. And, uh, and then after the extra special, what's another extra special supercar? Is that like the only one? Um, the, the SF90 is amazing. Yes, that's going to be one. The GT3 RS, so that's, not an, that's the ex extra special to me because that is our workhorse. GT3S, have you noticed the, the difference in the GT3S color now that you get used to the Urus? That, yeah. gr that green feels so much different to me now. Yeah. That's like dull, almost. It, it is, it's less yeah. exciting, even though it's the most produced GT3S color yeah. that they make. So the Porsche is probably gonna stick around for a while if I can get a GT3RS 992. When, yeah. when we get. When, all right, good, I mean, add MSRP. That will not happen. <laughs> well, I'm not going to we'll get, get one. one I'm not paying above MSRP. Cheap is MSRP or lower. And then we have Vibe cars. So Vibe cars, I am really jiving right now. My 83 Cadillac limo, the Lamborghini Countach. I would say the Ford GT falls into the Vibe category. It's a, it's a 16 year old car and you just feel like you're vibing in that thing. Yeah, the M5 is going to be sick. Oh, we yeah. want to do a wide body Testarossa. That's coming up soon, hopefully. Yeah, we, we went and put it on the back of the shirt As you can um, see. when we bought it. And uh, sent it back so we have to get one now we're shirt committed it's like pot committed but you're shirt committed i think we're going to segue into cars i have in order of course i think uh, many of you know by now that the holy grail is the f1 i have committed within the next two years is that what i said yeah 24 months i'm declaring as long as the price doesn't go crazy as long as it's 25 million as long as it doesn't go crazy that car's freaking we got to find a if you know of a used high mileage slightly doesn't dented matter. damaged or dinged f1 a modified that's going under 20 million dollars let me know uh i probably still can't afford it but within the next two years i can all right what are you least excited for out of all the cars that i have in order i would say the the cyber truck and i think you got another escalade right escalade v that'll be cool but compared to the other stuff it's just not as exciting tesla roadster i'm just gonna be Frank, I'm not excited for it because it doesn't exist yet. Hi, Frank. As soon as, hi, I'm Tommy. Ah, Frank, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that car I'm just not excited for because it doesn't exist. Like, I don't know when that car is going to become a reality when it's, Which one? you know, the, the Tesla Roadster. Oh, my bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just. Those three are on the bottom of the list, yeah. arguably. So we're going to breeze over that. Cybertruck, I think that'll possibly replace the CO2 truck because we're going to need a truck to be able to haul the trailer. We're starting to trailer the vehicles a little bit more. Um, it's not that we're putting less miles on them. It's just that we're also expanding too. We're going to, yes. we're going to Minneapolis for car shows. We're yes. going to Car Week. We're going to Columbus for car shows. So yeah. we're just expanding our horizons. So um, trailering is becoming a reality. Exactly. All right. So Ro Roadster, Cybertruck. Escalade, they put both the V-Series and the standard model because they delivered me the standard model without Super Cruise. I really wanted that feature, even sold my Tesla Plaid yeah. gearing up. We uh, waited an extra six months for Super Cruise and then they gave us the car without Super Cruise. So thank you, Cadillac. Shout out to Heritage Cadillac of Lombard, Illinois. <laughs> yeah. Uh, amazing. So uh, from there, SF90, which I already... SF90, yeah. And we're not even, at this point, we're not even going in order. It's just shoot off what you got in mind. Yeah. SF90, I'm actually super hyped for. Talking about with some people uh, at Monterey, um, the SF90 is stupid fast. So SF90 is coming. That should be uh, probably beginning of next year, Q1 2023. Yes. Um, and then... Well, the SF90, so we ordered that. This is where we can maybe show the specs. Yes. We ordered that originally in Grigio Gray? Grigio Scuro. Grigio Scuro. With and, and with a dark red, like a maroonish almost interior. I don't know if you know the color code on that. We skipped out on the Nero package. Is that what it's called? The Southern Fierno package, okay. all the carbon fiber, the, it doesn't come with the front lift and you should see the front splitter on the 48. It's, it's bad. It's so bad. bad so bad. we need, we need the front lift because we be driving these cars. They're not just coming out and in the garage just to show people like they're getting driven and driven hard. I mean, I scraped up my Bugatti and David Dobrik's driveway because I was out driving it and because I'm an idiot. SF90, I think we're going to respec. I'm, I'm selling my 488 GTB. I think I mentioned that before, but I don't know if yellow will look good on that. I think it will. I think it will. If we, if we do enough 
carbon and like black accents and the yellow will pop because it looks amazing on this car. I don't love yellow on cars typically. I think the 48 pulls it off really, really well. And we're not going to have a yellow car when that's gone, so. That's true. Go do and that. we're not going to do a hyper in yellow. Hypers don't belong in yellow. But that is a super special supercar that is that held the fastest car record, I think, until the, the quickest car, until the Tesla Plaid dethroned it. Yeah. But I heard that those are just stupid, stupid fast with a hybrid drive. And uh, I am excited to get that. Yeah. Um, ordered it on Halloween of last year, so that will be a good year and a quarter before we get that. Yeah. Uh, next up, I am, let's talk about the Bugatti. Kind of a love-hate relationship with Bugatti. So we had initially gotten a Bugatti Chiron SS. What we thought was an allocation, went back and read the conversation a little bit deeper, and it was a spot on the wait list. So they sold all the allocations. We got a spot on the wait list. However, we were told that it was basically a guaranteed spot. Like, you're number two, you're number three. People will drop off, they always do. Um, so it was pitched to us that it was guaranteed. We're like, great, cool. So months passed by, three months, six months. Um, I should have been informed by then that I had gotten that spot and it didn't happen. At this point, Steve had so much money down in the car too. I don't disclose an amount, but, but he had a lot of, a significant amount of money put down on a car that, that we weren't even getting, which I think is surprising. At the end of the day, we did get an allocation for the Chiron Supersport through Aguero Coach and Beverly Hills. Uh, Tim, the general manager over there, helped us out. He's been amazing and we can't wait for this car. It's it's going to be awesome. So finally had a conversation with uh, Cedric Davey, their COO, nice guy, um, after talking with my dealer contact. And, and he basically just said, you know, this is probably going to be the last full gas model, like mainstream. I say mainstream, even though they only produce a couple hundred of these things. But, but you know, they had the Veyron, they had the Chiron. This will be their last gas mainstream vehicle. The SS, in my opinion, is the most badass looking of all of the variants that they did. We are trying to do a PTS. I think we're going to submit the spec in just a little bit. It's due in like three days. I think we're going to submit it and we're just going to exclude the color and we'll decide on the PTS color later. I think we're landing pretty close to the original spec video we did, the gray and orange, because that's where we, it's going to be similar to that, there'll be some, some tweaks. Yes, and it's funny because we, when we submitted it to Bugatti, after we did our original spec video, we actually submitted a really different one. Show, show the one we submitted just to show how far we deviated. It's the blue one with the gray stripes, uh, Lawrence. But we deviated heavily from the one we spec'd and then I started getting pulled back into the dark green. When Tommy really liked it, I, I saw it and I'm like, you know, I think that probably is the right way to go. We did eliminate the back black piece. It doesn't look good in person. It's right, didn't the bottom, the other one had the black. The black oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, we're switching so, the back end a little bit. We're just gonna do the bottom carbon, I'm sorry, the bottom stripe in carbon black. The interior, lots of tasteful orange. I need to see how the Bugatti Jet Gray compares with the Grigio Telesto. That is a Lamborghini color. And um, I think it's used exclusively. That's their color. They're very right? similar. Yeah, okay. they are. Yeah. And uh, I need, but they, they look very similar. And, and if they are, I need to go a little bit darker. I need to make it a little more different. But this is going to be a PTS, and we're going to make sure it's a one-off. We should uh, do a okay. Grigio Chalosa with Diamond Flake. Maybe. That'd be crazy. Maybe. Yeah. I'll see what that, find me a sample, and we'll see All what right. it looks like. All right. Um, we are going to fly out to Molsheim at some point in time over the next few months. When you go see a car in production, it can really change your perspective on it. Even walking around Monterey, um, and we'll, we'll segue into the Koenig's egg, but we saw a Porsche in shark blue, mm -hmm. and I'm like, gosh, that's a, that's a badass blue. And uh, the Nala blue that we were gonna do looks very similar to the Mexico blue, I think, or was it Miami? Nala is very similar to Mexico blue. Okay, Nala is very similar to Mexico. Initially, we wanted to do Mexico blue on the Yesco, and then we shifted into Nala, but they're actually both very similar. So we, and there's already someone that did the Mexico blue yeah. in the Koenig's egg. There's only like, 30, 40 of these come to the US, so we don't want to have the exact same one as someone else. So we need to find a little bit different blue. But again, walking around Monterey inspired us. We have a video up that shows me racing with Houston Crosta in his Koenigsegg. I think it I think it moved my direction a little bit backwards. I mean, I love our relationship with Koenigsegg. They're fantastic people, and I'm told the Yesco is going to be different. But the, the 2014 model was so raw with just air condition doesn't work well. He, uh, Houston said that that was pretty general about Koenigseggs or maybe a, of the Ajera. Um, it turned me off a little bit, but I'm still just as resilient about getting the Yesco. There's no way I'm, I'm turning backwards on it. Like, I'm gonna get it. I'm just not quite as pumped as I was. The, the Agera really felt like a race car. The suspension was so stiff when you yes. drove it. It was, it, the yeah. road noise was so loud, the cabin noise was It felt crazy. like a GT40 from the 60s that had the steering of a Porsche. It made, it made the Senna feel luxurious, truly. <laughs> yes. Like, it's crazy. It did, it, was it did. A lot more than I expected. We also have a Jamera on order too which is yes. crazy. That, that was your first deposit on any hypercar you ever purchased was a Jamera yeah. yeah. two years ago. Yes, and we, I think we're gonna do the inverted color scheme. So we didn't talk about the color. I think we did decide on shark blue for the Koenigsegg. Um, we're gonna go to the factory again just to make sure that that makes sense. I think it will. Koenigsegg seemed to be the most reasonable with PTS. They were like, I don't know, it might be ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 more. I'm like, ten, fifteen, not like 150? I was, I think that they're very reasonable on their upgrades in general. 
um, where it's very expensive with other auto manufacturers. So we are gonna try and do the inverted color scheme on the Jamera. So shark blue with some type of very bold orange, not like my McLaren orange or papaya spark, it needs to be a little more dark. Just tasteful accents in orange, yes. they're not too crazy. Yes. Yeah, subtle, tasteful accents, not too little, not too much, that's what she said. And so the Jamera that we've got in order, of course it seats four, six feet, six adults comfortably. Um, I'll be putting my kids in there, who knows how tall my son Logan will be. I think he's, I think he might be, no, nah, he's gonna be my height. Whenever my wife Caroline is out, um, this is gonna be the, the car that I take the kids out to dinner in, uh, the family cruiser whenever the wife is busy or whenever one of the kids is gone. Um, I'm excited about that. Or maybe the one I pick up the kids from school in. What is next, Thomas? Well, you just did a Phantom extended wheelbase recently. Yeah. That car's super good. That's another one where like going to Monterey and seeing these cars in person um, kind of changed the spec a little bit. We added some things that we liked that we, that we saw. Uh, the Phantom, we're replacing Steve's current Ghost extended wheelbase. So uh, the Phantom yep. should be here in nine, 10 months, I'd say. Nine so months. we're doing completely black on the Standard outside to match. Uh, <laughs> to, to match his Ghost. Um, murdered out, I think we're gonna do a Mansory kit once that car gets delivered. Yeah, and then, uh, we'll see how long I waited and how Pretty much, that's true. Maybe may later. Yeah, and then a full orange interior, uh, orange calipers, and the hand-painted orange line down the side. The orange line is the one that was one of the biggest changes that we saw from Monterey Car Week. We had seen one with one, the double orange, not a huge fan, but the single orange hand-painted stripe. Um, I saw it and I'm like, you know what, that does actually look Very really tasteful, good. yeah. Yep. Uh, curtains it's gonna have, it's gonna have reclining Ridge. seats. Refrigerator, yep. foot, uh, foot stools, yep. Starlight headliner is actually standard on it. Yeah, it'll have uh, the, the computer desk that you can work on from the back seat if you want to. It has that fold oh, down two, desk. Fold down yeah, desk? that'll be sweet. What else is on order? Testarossa, we touched on briefly. That's going to happen. We just need to find. I have to be looking for one. If you guys know of any Testarossas for a good deal that we can wide body black. and uh, rip apart. It is, it's got to be black though at this point. Red is too common. Yeah, black, black on black. Fan, or so. black on red. Black on anything. Black on you would do tan? I would, uh, I would. It's on the bottom of the list, and that's probably the most common spec that they did. Another one we're excited for, but don't have an, uh, we don't have a written confirmation we're getting one, but it's a verbal confirmation, the new Aventador successor. Aventador replacement is going to be dual clutch, so it it's, the, uh, I don't know if you just said that. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, oh. I'm excited for the next one. So it's going to be dual clutch. I could, I could have dealt with my Aventador if it just had the dual clutch. Like the steering is heavy, it's really wide, and it, it doesn't feel like a track car which is okay. If it had the dual clutch, I would have been able to deal with it. I think clunky is the best way to describe that car. Agreed. It feels Agreed. very clunky. So if they get it more like the Huracan drivetrain system, I mean, they're owned by Volkswagen, right? Like put a PDK transmission in there or something. Um, then I'm a happy camper and, uh, and I'm sure it's gonna look amazing. Um, it's gonna be a hybrid, which is gonna be cool too. The, uh, is it? It is a hybrid. I don't know enough about it because yeah, I just don't care. V12 hybrid, uh, it has the, the uh, dual clutch. It'll that be a badass is, car. That is badass, dude. I love that. Hybrid was the hyper of the 2010 to 2015 yeah, era, and now and now it is now it is the high the prestige supercar, right? Yeah. SF90, that yeah. probably others that I'm forgetting about. But speaking of hybrids and that conversation, just got a written but basically verbal, but not sure. written in an email confirmation that we will get the successor to the P1. Um, they're working on a successor to the McLaren P1 that's going to be, I think it's going to be unveiled publicly in about a year. And you better freaking believe I'm going to get that. That car's going to be amazing. I've heard a couple whispers that it looks amazing, like stunning. Even compared to the P1, they outdid themselves. So I, that I'm really excited for. Will we call that one P2 on the license plate? P-T-O-O. <laughs> our, uh, our license plate on the other P1 is P Juan. Yeah. There are more cars on order. I didn't realize it was this great of a quantity. Yeah, we're getting a lot. Those are those two we just talked about are on order. I mean, we're going to get Those in. are just... on order. They, that's like a development of the past. We actually filmed this video a few weeks ago and had to refilm it because we have so many more cars that are coming since yes. we've gone to Monterey. And, Literally um, three or four of these have, have changed. There, there is a new Pagani coming out to replace the Huayra. Um, don't know why I think I'm thinking about that later because it's definitely top three as far as what I am hyped for. Um, I absolutely love our relationship with Pagani. They are such good people that, that genuinely care about their Dive into how we met them. Um, met them at a dinner. So they, they happened to be in central Illinois meeting with Jimmy John. Um, through our contact at Miller Motor Cars, Evan. Um, Evan's a great dude. He said, you know, they're going to be in the Chicago area. You, you guys want to grab dinner? I'm like, like the Pagani family? Like Chris Pagani and, and the CEO of Pagani Americas? Hell yeah, absolutely. I'll stop what I'm doing and uh, drop what I'm doing and have dinner with them. So had dinner at the Walrus Room in Geneva. Great spot to go. Go dine at the Walrus Room, it's delicious. Code name on this is C10. By the time you're watching this, it may even uh, already have the replacement name on it. Tommy, is there anything else on order? Cybertruck, Tesla Roadster, Escalade Standard and Escalade V, SF90, the Phantom, Yesco, Jamera, C10, Bugatti, Chiron Supersport, the P1 successor and the uh, Lamborghini Aventador successor. So that's 12. 
That's what a lot that? of cars. Wait, did you say that? I just counted. Yeah, I just counted all those. That's 12. You're I can count that high. I know a lot of you guys may not know this, but I can count the 12. If you got any work for me, uh, I need to raise some cash. Uh, <laughs> we'll work for money. <laughs> got a lot of money needs in the pipeline. I, in 2024 is going to be very, very rough because that's when a you lot just start of saving. Uh, I think all three of the hybrids that we currently have in order, besides the P1, I guess that's a verbal confirmation, all those are landing in 24. Be like Jesus, don't spend, save. And if you want to see these cars when they get delivered in 2024, please subscribe, turn that notification bell on, buy some merch, uh, come by the new car condo that is opening soon, the headquarters. Mm -hmm. It's going to be sweet. As you can tell, I think it's our first video filming here. Yeah. It is. It's exciting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Ow! I got a boo-boo. It's a pee, pee one when you whip out your pee-pee too fast and then it and hits your hits, shin. It like scrapes you ever have that happen? While you're walking. Gosh, man. Yeah, it chafes. <laughs> uh... <laughs>